Hallelujah. We'll continue to study God's word even this morning about grace and what it can do in a person's life. The Bible declares that the grace of God is everlasting and from those words we make this confession every Sunday and where it states that the Bible declares that grace will take us from where we are to where God wants us to be. Say those words together with me. Grace takes me from where I am to where God wants me to be. If you are already in a very good place, he will, God will take you to a much better place that you never even dreamt of. So we have been looking at grace and the Bible declares that God, Christ Jesus is the source of all grace. He is the foundation of grace. In John's gospel we read, out of his fullness we have received grace upon grace in our life. So again the Bible also declares in the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, grace and truth or peace will be multiplied to you. Again what kind of knowledge? It is a knowledge that results as a, as a result of having a personal uh, relationship that leads to a personal revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And we have been looking at this particular aspect in the past weeks about the sovereignty of God or the providential you know, control that God has in the lives of people who put their trust in God. Romans 8.28, we all know it by heart, some of us at least. The Bible says, God causes all things to work together for good in the lives of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. He has control over our circumstances. Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 3, all these verses of scripture, we have already dealt with it to some extent, but I am reminding you this morning. The Bible says, since God has loved us, he has changed the curse into becoming a blessing for us. Again, Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, uh, Joseph makes a confession about God's sovereign control in our lives. He says, you meant it for evil, but God has meant it for good. And we've been asking this question until God makes evil to become good. What should I be doing in the meanwhile? You know, in the time that I'm waiting, we just sang this song where it says, as we wait upon God, we shall mount up with wings as eagles. If you are just waiting for the sake of waiting, that will not bring about empowerment. Rather, you will get very discouraged and disillusioned in life. But the Bible declares, those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. So what should I be doing until God brings about a change in my circumstances? I know he can do, I know he will, but what should I be doing meanwhile until God brings about that wonderful change? Number one, perseverance. We have been looking at it in the past weeks. The Bible says by faith and by perseverance, you need to inherit the promises of God. Number two, we have to learn to deal with our passions, meaning our emotions. Because during this waiting period, you can either become very bitter or you can become better in the hand of God. You can become either discouraged or you can become, you know, become more like Christ during that particular period. So we have to learn with our emotions again. What does the Bible say? What does Joseph himself say? He says, God has caused me to forget my bitterness. In other words, he says, God has taught me how to deal with my emotional problems because your emotion or how you deal with it is very important for your promotion. I will say that again. How you deal with your emotion is very, very important for your promotion. That is why the Bible says that the fruit of the spirit, the divine emotions, you know, that are inspired in our hearts through the presence of the Holy Spirit and how God's grace works in our heart. Number three is we have to maintain a godly perspective until things change in our favor. Of course, God is going to do that. But until then, we have to maintain our, our spiritual perspective. And that is where we come to this particular verse in Genesis chapter 41 and verse 16. You know, this is Joseph speaking again. He says it like this and I paraphrase and say to you, not I, but God. Say that word together with me, not I, but God. This is not some kind of cliche that uh, Joseph has come up with in his life. No, this is a result of something wonderful that has happened 
in the life of a person and even this morning god wants to bring about that kind of a change in your heart if you are going to focus upon yourself what happened to you you know why me why should this happen to me why you know all these things are kind of targeted at me and if you are just focused on you you need to listen to the word of god shift your focus get a perspective where the man of god joseph says not i but god as i told you again it is not some kind of a magical formula it is not some kind of a cliche where you say it in order for you to overcome your circumstances no this is a word that has come as a result of inner transformation i am going to say that again this is a word that has spoken as a result of inner transformation how do i say that why do i say that galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 again we looked at it last week why do we have to make a kind of a review this morning some of you you might have missed it but i am here to remind you again are you with me remind you so that we will continue to study from the word of god what does paul say i have been crucified with christ i no longer live but christ lives in me the life i live in this body is through faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me these are the days where we call it lent days you know and many churches they have special meetings where we focus on what christ has done on the cross of calvary some people they forgo eating meat during these days good for them are you with me and some people they don't buy they don't sell they don't get engaged they don't get married because these are days where you have to focus on the cross are you with me that is true it's good go go ahead and do it but at the same time remember not only was christ crucified on the cross paul here says i have been crucified with christ that is the key you know it's not just giving up meat are you with me it is not just giving up or following some kind of tradition traditions they don't set you free but the truth will set you free and what is the truth the truth says not only is christ crucified on the cross i have been crucified with me i told you if there is a replacement word for sin it is selfishness so to put it in another way paul is saying i meaning i i ego and all those things i has been crucified with christ therefore i no no longer lives say that word with me i has been crucified with christ i no longer lives i gets lost in the i am are you with me i no longer live but christ lives in me okay christ lives in you but you are living in coimbatore how are you going to live your life the bible says the life i live in this body he comes and breaks it down to practical application of this wonderful truth he says i no longer live but christ lives in me how do i live my life the life i live in this body is through faith in the son of god who loved me and he has given himself for me again we need to break that up so that we can kind of get a good understanding of it i live by faith say that word with me i live by faith the bible says the righteous they live by faith what does it simply mean the bible says that you live by faith in the son of god last week i told you faith is like a fuse say that word with me faith is like a fuse even this morning the fuse went off you know maybe just for me to repeat this illustration again so the fuse again went off in the in the electricity post so what did we what did we do we just on the generator are you with me uh, so the fuse the moment the fuse goes you know the power is there you know it is available but it can't come into your house it cannot come into your life because the connection is lost and faith is works like a connection it works like a fuse if you if you want me to give you another illustration it is like a sirwani dam you know it is full of water we need to pray that it will remain full so that through the summer we will not have any problems if you didn't say amen you will never get water i'll give you another chance we need to pray that it will be pastor nangalam pillur dam for that also <laughs> for that also it is very important are you with me so it has to remain full but how do you get sirwani water into your house it is almost you know approximately 40 kilometers from uh, from the dam to my house is that not true 
from 40 kilometers or oh, 40 kilometers away all i ever need is there but i am here somewhere you know in in sai baba calling but how come what is there comes into my house into my living room or into my kitchen whatever that might be how is that possible there is a connection are, are you with me there is a connection so there is a massive pipe that connects to the dam by the time the pipe comes to my house it is only 1 inch are you, are you with me but 1 in, inch is good enough because the whole point is it is still connected in the same way god has everything you may not have anything at all you might be in need of healing this morning you might be in need of finance you might be in need of just a peace and quietness in my mind i need some kind of tranquility i need some kind of peace when i hit my head on the pillow i want to sleep well that is all i am asking for god will give it to you but not in the next one hour are you, are you with me you know he can give it all it is possible he's got everything that he you will ever want in life but how can what he has can become part of my life i need to have faith in him i need to be connected to him who is he that i need to be connected to him paul says it is he who has loved me and he has given himself for me to put it in another word word i can paraphrase it like this he loved me and he has done everything for me and i live my life in this body having put my faith in christ who has done it all for me are you with me so even this morning there is plenty of any and every blessing that you will ever need in life what you need this morning is that you need to put your faith in god meaning you need to be connected to god to put it in another word there are plenty of water there are plenty of soap in the world but there are still plenty of dirty people what's the problem it's not the lack of soap or it's not the lack of water the problem is they have not taken it and they have not applied it to their lives in the same way on the cross of calvary the bible says he took all our sin all our pain all our sorrow everything has been carried away and salvation has made available for you and for me paul says the life i live in this body the life i live in coimbatore is by having faith in the son of god who has loved me and he has given himself for me lift your hand and say big amen if faith is the big deal you know to put it that way bible says without faith it is impossible to please god if it is impossible to please god without faith then i need to know what is faith and how it operates in my life very simple verse of scripture that we keep reminding or saying often again and again from romans chapter 10 the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the message of god or the word of god not only it is just mere hearing there is another step that we need to kind of take it into our hearts this morning faith comes by hearing how many of you can hear me at the last row can you hear me no problem i can see hands uh, so i i take it that you hear me but the question the next question is not do you hear me the next question is do you understand me yeah yeah i see a head nodding therefore i take it that they do understand what's the difference between hearing and understanding that's the difference between noise and music are you with me you know if, if it is noise the guy does not have any musical sense for him if you play an orchestra piece or any music for that matter he may not make much of it because to him it doesn't mean much but to a person who is musically inclined who has got a sense of music the moment you play those music he will immediately not only hear but he will also understand if you are with me say a big amen to that so let me come to uh, come with me to um, matthew's gospel chapter 13 and verse 19 faith comes by hearing but it is it is taken for granted that it also includes something much more important more than hearing or together with hearing there is something much more uh, significant that we need to get into our hearts matthew's gospel chapter 13 jesus is giving the explanation to the parable of the seed or parable of the soil parable of the sower come with me to matthew's gospel chapter 13 and verse 19 Jesus says anyone when anyone hears the word of the kingdom 
and does not understand it the evil one comes i am going to say those words again when anyone hears the word of god and does not understand it the evil one comes when does the devil come oh just go through the verse and give me an answer you know when you don't understand you know the bible says when somebody hears the message and they don't understand immediately the devil will come let me give you another option also even if you understand the devil will come even if you pretend to understand he will still come because his target is to make your life as miserable as possible and jesus is more focused on making your life as blessed as possible the key is found in verse 19 in the bible says anyone who hears the word and understands that is going to make a difference in his life you know we have been uh, we have studied in school and when when the teacher teaches a lesson they go through the portions whatever and at the end of the class they ask a question or even in the middle of the class they will ask a question what is the question do you understand you know that's the question they ask immediately if they ask towards the end of the class everybody pretends to understand because at the end of the class no we don't want to put our hand up and spoil the rest of the free time that we will have so they all pretend yes yes we do understand no problem but the whole point is you heard what she was saying or he was saying but unless you understand you cannot reproduce that in your exam are you with me so it is very important that we understand what is being preached as 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 the responsibility of the preacher it's not just to kind of give you something and hope that you understand what i was saying no 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 my whole aim this morning is to make you understand are you with me and that is why we give you illustration so that you will not miss the point but you will get the point so the bible says when anyone hears my word and does not understand it makes the work of the enemy very easy for him because this guy went to church it is true this guy heard the message that is also true but the point is this guy did not understand the message therefore since he does not have any understanding it is very easy for the devil to come and confuse that person and make them get derailed in their christian walk with god that is why the bible says faith not just comes by hearing we can also say faith comes by understanding and understanding the word of god say that word with together with me faith comes by understanding and understanding god's word in all your getting proverbs the bible says get understanding again to put it in another way when you understand you will stand i will say that again when you understand you will stand are you going through a problem this morning and is, is your knee kind of almost on the verge of giving up on you let me tell you when you understand the truth of god's word no matter what happens you will stand that is why the psalmist says a thousand may fall at my right 10000 may fall at my left but i will stand and i will stand and see the salvation of the lord the bible says somebody boasted in chariots and some in horses but we boasted in the name of the lord and we stand and we stand upright god will make you stand this week hallelujah he will make you stand upright in your circumstances but the key to all that is found in this particular verse that you need to understand what was being preached that is why jesus was making the kingdom of god the teaching about kingdom of god as simple as possible so that the normal lay person could understand what it is all about it's not just good enough just coming to church hearing hearing some preacher preach god's word but you need to understand and when you go back home you need to take something of the truth of god in your life that will make you stand in the midst of uh, uh, opposition that you will face in your life again jesus speaking to the disciples you know they were traveling and jesus makes this comment he says be careful of the yeast of the pharisees you know is that not what jesus said be careful of the yeast of the pharisees immediately what were the disciples thinking you know the bible says the disciples were thinking that jesus is making an indirect attack on them because they have forgot to bring bread you know and jesus knowing what was going in their mind 
he began to ask a few questions he asked the disciples you know when there was five loaves and two fishes how many people ate and they responded 5000 how many baskets of leftover did you get 12 ba- baskets of leftover and he asked all these questions don't you understand that with little i can make much i am not talking about the bread i am talking about the teaching of the pharisees again we can ask a question why can't you be simple and tell us be aware of the teaching of the pharisees again let me put it in another way everybody knows a to z is that not true a b c d you know that that we start in lkg you know when the when the teacher says everybody recite the alphabet immediately they will start in a chorus and they will sing the whole way through but if it if the same thing happens in 12th standard when the teacher comes in and says everybody stand to your feet 1 2 3 let's all say the alphabet a b c no 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 that doesn't happen in 12th standard you are not in lkg this morning when god says one thing you need to understand a hundred things from that one particular word because the word of god is full of god himself if you are with me say a big amen to that so the disciples you know they were thinking on a different wavelength they were thinking very differently but jesus constantly gives them the word of god to bring them to a place of understanding and that is what is needed even this very morning until god makes the evil to become good we need to gain keep a godly perspective we need to stand our ground for us to stand we need to understand say that word together with me for me to stand i need to do what understand there are times in our world in our life where we don't understand what is going on at that moment even at those times i want you to realize this particular truth if you don't understand what is happening now remember and understand act on the understanding that you already have for example things have changed the for the contrary how are you going to look at it at the circumstances when things are very adverse i am going to lean back on one simple understanding that he never changes he remains the same yesterday today and forever with what i know i am going to deal with what i don't know i am going to say that again with what i know i am going to deal with what i do not know one thing i know and i am persuaded paul says that whatever i have committed to him he is able to guard it till that particular day lift your hand and say a big amen to that there is another powerful understanding of paul he says it like this nothing is able to kind of separate me from the love of christ in god the bible declares so this morning you may not be <coughs> fully aware of what is happening in your life why me why all these things are happening to me if you don't understand that particular aspect don't worry about about that you have another understanding which says that god never changes his love for you it never changes the promises of god they never change heaven and earth might pass away but god's word it will never pass away you are you have been engraved in the palm of god's hand you are in the hand of god you will never be lost you will never perish lean on that understanding and stand until this problem goes past you hallelujah that is what is needed this morning so the bible again says when you hear the word and when you don't understand the devil comes the bible says the devil went to jesus himself is that not true if he can go to jesus don't you think he can come to you oh come on don't you think pastor ivanga bayamurthringe no 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 don't worry about it if he goes to christ he will certainly come to you you know if he, if he can tempt the son of god himself he can certainly tempt the sons of god but let me tell you he came to christ but he went away a person who has been defeated ashamed put to shame i want to say the same will happen when he comes to you also he will run away saying you know i cannot overcome this person because he is god understanding he came to the to the lord the son of god himself and he says it like this if you are the son of god why don't you change the stones to become bread how did jesus overcome that particular problem he says it is written say that word with me it is written meaning you need to know where it is written and what it means you know that is very very important you know so there are plenty of verses right from genesis to malachi that was the old testament that was available 
during that particular time if you take from genesis to manakai and make a word say search for bread you will get a num- uh, quite a number of references for bread is that not true a uh, quite a number of references for bread but jesus took one particular important word from deuteronomy chapter 8 and he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god you know some people say you know when you are given the opportunity to preach you know would you share god's word this wednesday for example immediately they are lost what to preach and we can logically ask a question you have such a book you know so many verses of scripture you know thousands of pages can't you just take one page and speak the word we can do that but god has a specific word for every specific meeting if you are with me say a big amen to that that is why we need to listen to god there are plenty of verses but for to defeat that devil in that particular instance and circumstance jesus says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god every lock has got a key say that word with me every lock has got a key every problem has got a promise i'm going to say that again every problem that you will ever face has got a promise in the word of god you need to know the promise you need to understand the promise and god will make you stand until the promise becomes a fruition in your life lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah and god is able to do that in your life again the devil says he is not going to give up that easily you know when jesus says it is written he also plays the same game the bible says is it not written in the bible psalm 91 where the bible says when you when you fall you know the angels they are going to carry you so why don't you jump from the pinnacle of the temple what did jesus do he says that it is also written say that word with me it is also written again a, a very important principle that we need to learn you know you cannot build a doctrine based on one single word based on one single scripture so if somebody takes one particular scripture and makes a big deal out of it builds a doctrine you need to be aware of it we need to have more than one scripture to make a doctrine if you are with me say a big amen to that let me illustrate you will be able to understand you know why, why is this very important because some people will take one scripture from one corner and make that a big deal in your life to get you to do what they want you to do you understand what i'm saying they get you to do what they want you to do and the simple logic is it is there in the bible there are a lot of things in the bible jesus uh, judas hanged himself does it give an idea for people to die that it is also there in the bible bible talks about a lot of things that is why understanding is necessary say that word with me what is necessary understanding is necessary the bible says you know paul says let all the women be silent in church why do you laugh you know that is scripture you know every scripture is god breath and you take that particular scripture that is one good example one good scripture to shut the mouths of many you understand what i'm saying but that is not the only scripture that talks about women being silent there are other scriptures where the bible itself says when the woman prays when the woman prophesies oh so they can pray they can also prophesy so where do you fit this thing about being silent there is a time where you have to be silent you understand what i am saying paul says you have to be silent if you have any questions because the context of that situation was when the preacher was preaching they will put their hand up and ask silly questions or interesting questions you <laughs> with me so paul says you need to be silent you go home ask your husband immediately another woman puts her hand up he always fall asleep in the church you you understand what i'm trying to say so paul says one in one particular circumstance and there are other verses of scripture which balances so that we you will not be you know kind of off, off, offsided in your understanding but rather you will have a good balance and you can stand lift your hand and say a big amen to that the bible says let not your adornment be merely external is that not what the bible says but that word merely is missing in tamil so what the doctrine has been built up is that 
you should not adorn yourself you know externally i will scare people that's all right you understand what i'm trying to say the bible says let not your adornment merely be external but there is something that is more permanent which is a quiet and a meek spirit the bible says jesus is saying i am gentle and meek and meekness is the fruit of the spirit so the bible says concentrate on what is permanent but don't let, neglect what is temporal also if you understand say a big amen to that so if you just take one from one end and make a big deal out of it then the whole thing gets spoiled the bible talks about in the night that jesus was betrayed he took bread and he gave thanks so immediately the conclusion is whenever you need to take a communion it has to be in the night because the bible says in the night that jesus was betrayed the in tamil it comes on ra bhojanam enna bhojanam ka bhojanam illa kaalai bhojanam illa you understand it is not ma bhojanam madhyana bhojanam illa what is this ra bhojanam therefore you need to take when oh come on you have to take it in the night and again they go mood to the old testament and they said the priests were making the bread so at some point some of the pastors were making bread because in the old testament you know the priests were making bread thank god for liberty i don't make bread i get somebody to buy it for you are you with me what is the whole emphasis of communion when you do it do it in remembrance when you are eating it think of me not who made the bread did the pastor made the bread no that is not the emphasis of scripture that is why the bible says faith comes by understanding and understanding the word of god which will make you stand in life lift your hand and say big amen to that so the bible says it is key for us to understand god's word going back to joseph he says not me but god himself for him to say such a word there has been a wonderful work of grace in his heart how does it work again faith is the key again faith comes by hearing faith comes by understanding the word of god come with me to psalm chapter 105 and verse 19 here the psalmist is making a summary of the old testament the whole of old testament history when it comes to joseph what does he say psalm 105 and verse 19 the bible says until the time that his word came to pass the word of the lord tested joseph to give you another verse of um, uh, another translation it puts it like this the word of god began to try it began to prove it began to refine joseph as the as a result of this refinement he says not i but god refinement is also an expression that he understood the whole happenings in his life it is not just to do with me god has a greater plan therefore he comes and says it is no longer i but it is god so what is refinement what does refining by the word do to you it gives you understanding refinement again is a very very simple word that we can very well understand we always constantly use it we have sunflower oil and what do we else what else do we have in the same thing refined sunflower oil we have coconut oil and what do we have இந்த ஊரில் தான் இருக்கீங்க வாட் யூ ஹேவ் ரிஃபைண்ட் யூ நோ டபுள் ரிஃபைண்ட் வாட் இஸ் டபுள் ரிஃபைண்ட் ரிஃபைண்ட் இட்ஸ் மோர் த ப்ராசஸ் ஆஃப் பியூரிஃபைங் இட் யூ நோ எஸ் இட் இஸ் இட் இஸ் தேர் ஆஸ் அ ஆஸ் அ ரா கமாடிட்டி பட் தே டேக் இட் தே மேக் இட் கோ த்ரூ சர்டன் ப்ராசஸ் அண்ட் தே கால் இட் ரிஃபைண்ட் ரி இஸ் டூயிங் இட் அகெயின் ஃபைன் இஸ் ஃபைன் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் காட்ஸ் வேர்ட் டூ டு யூ அண்ட் டு மீ இட் ரிஃபைண்ட் அஸ் லாஸ்ட் சண்டே what is god's word doing this morning it is refining you until you become a complete man or a complete woman in god when is that going to be possible the bible says when we see him we shall be like him until then what is happening in our life is god refines tell your neighbor god refines he will refine you today you are fine but what god what will god do to you let me approach it from another point you ask how are you and you say what what do you say fine then you respond god will refine you let me say that again how are you fine what what is god going to do refine you after god refines you how will you be what is god going to do again 
oh come on idu bore adikide you know all this refining refining again and again and again why so much of refinement is necessary because so much of problems are there so much of refinement is necessary because there is so much of garbage in our understanding and in the way that we have an outlook on life god has to do it again and again and again and again until you come to a point where you say it's no longer i but christ lives in me so you need to understand this process that god is using his word to refine you and me even during our difficult and very adverse circumstances how does god do the refinement come with me to psalm chapter 12 and verse 6 faith comes by not only hearing but understanding what you hear word is the key word is that which brings refinement so that you will maintain a godly perspective in life psalm chapter 12 and verse 6 there is an analogy being used by the psalmist here he talks about silver getting refined compares it to the word and applies applies that to our life let me read it for you psalm chapter 12 and verse 6 the bible reads the words of the lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace on the earth refined seven times say that word with me refined seven times i told you seven is not a lucky number it just talks about you know the fullness of refinement so the bible compares in the the refining process of silver and they refine it seven times you know until the person who refines the silver can see the image of his face clearly on the metal are you with me so when they they refine it i'm sure you have uh, watched advertisements is that not true for uh, you know cleaning liquid you know what what is the advertisement have you seen it do you remember oh ningal tv e paakradilla we only watch god channel tbn and all those things no i know you watched it you know so the, what is the advertisement now it does it go they show you a very soiled you know piece of uh, uh, you know pottery and and they try it with other kind of uh, materials it doesn't work and what does the woman do she takes this this particular product she washes it and then she looks her face in that particular plate adjusts her pot now you remember you understand so why do they give you that particular advertisement it says even if you lost your mirror carry your plate no, <laughs> no that's that's not the focus are you, are you with me so the whole point is it can clean as clean as possible so that your image can be reflected in that particular object the same analogy is being used in our spiritual walk with god the refined word refines you to such an extent that the image of the son of god can be clearly seen in you and through you lift your hand and say big amen that's a long way to go but praise god god is at work even this very morning if you are fine god will refine you after you he has refined you he will refine you again one day it's going to happen when we see him we shall be like him because we see him and behold him as he is lift your hand and say big amen to that the bible says be ye holy as i am holy in all your behavior how is that possible how can i be like god how can i behave like god well the bible says the word of god which is god himself will constantly begin to refine you from the inside are you with me and this was the refinement that joseph has to go through remember how he started his life he was saying this is my vision this is my bundle of sheaves which is standing upright god is going to bless me i will be you know exalted you are all going to bow before me so on and so forth that was his way of approach but the bible says when a point came he began to say it is not i but god because without him i can do nothing lift your hand and say big amen to that the bible declares that the word of god begins to refine us it is a continuous process say that word with me it is what it's a continuous process maybe you kind of maintained your spirituality for some extent and you made a fault last week immediately the devil will come and he will speak into your heart saying you know that you you have lost it you know god will not refine you again uh, problems are going to continue in your life no don't worry about it 
even this very morning god can refine you again you know your hands are clean your hand, hands get dirty what do you do wash it again the bible says the blood of christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness if you have been guilt ridden this morning full of shame you know having you know feeling the 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 emotions of guilt overtaking your mind i am here to remind you the blood of christ can cleanse you from all unrighteousness lift your hand and say a big amen to that john 17 and verse 17 what does the bible say john 17 and verse 17 how does god refine you people uh, do have different kind of ideas about sanctification and how god does it john 17 and 17 the bible says sanctify them in the truth your word is the truth say that word with me sanctify them in the truth and your word is the truth how does god sanctify you this morning he is already sanctifying you even this very moment how is he sanctifying you through the preached word through the word of god some people have this you know terrible kind of understanding where they say god will break your leg and teach you holiness have you come across such kind of preaching you know they say god you know from from church you will straight end up in hospital only there god will t- we have also heard testimonies like that where people kind of say you know i was in this particular problem i ended up being in the hospital and there i came to the lord so the conclusion is you can only get saved when you are in the hospital you know that is not true you know this person was going his own way got into a problem and when he was in the midst of the problem god used this word to save him that is the proper approach if you are with me say a big amen to that how many of you want to be sanctified according to the word the bible says god uses his word to bring about sanctification why does god use his word because god's word is god himself let me approach it from another point of view the bible says or calls the third person of the trinity the holy spirit say that word together with me he is called the holy spirit what does the holy spirit do come on very simple logic that everybody can follow what does the holy spirit do he is called the holy spirit therefore what does he do oh come on what does he do oh let me approach it from a very simple point of view what do you expect in chicken biryani adu mathram theriyudhu you understand you know that is what we expect you know there is also what is called empty biryani where you don't expect anything even if you expect you won't get anything that is another aspect again coming back to our subject the holy spirit is called the holy spirit and his primary job is to make people holy so some people say when the holy spirit came upon me i felt a chill and some people will say i felt warm he is not temperature control you, you understand if if that is your experience we are not knocking that down when the holy spirit came down i was knocked on the floor yes it is possible yes you can fall under the power of god yes you can feel the chill yes you can feel the warm yes you can laugh yes you can roll but that is not it the holy spirit comes not to make you feel all these things externally the primary object and the primary ministry of the holy spirit is to make you holy how does he make you holy again he brings you brings to your remembrance the word and makes you understand that word when you understand that word what do you do you stand i will say that again when you understand the word what do you do you stand so you are about to commit a particular mistake for example and the moment you are about to commit that particular problem the holy spirit that is in you he will immediately bring a particular word of god to your remembrance for example somebody is kind of provoking you irritating you and you are about to use that english language that you have forgotten for a long time <laughs> you understand what i'm saying it was almost on the tip of your tongue immediately the holy spirit reminds you ketta vaarthai onru mun vaayil irundhu porapadalagad sumarunga eppa paaru adha nyaavapaduthi you understand he will bring it to your remembrance he will say let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth the moment that word is reminded let me tell you that word gives you the power 
to hold your tongue to compose yourself and say a word of blessing to him hallelujah i remember one guy from our church he was driving the bike and somebody crossed him and he was really terribly angry and he was you know he said do you have any sense and the man replied no i don't have so the both of them ended up laughing and they went their way it doesn't happen all the time you understand what i'm saying you know but that is how it happened you know when you are about to do something you know say something you know take a diversion in your life the holy spirit will remind you of his word not just remind you of the word but illuminate that word help you to understand that help you to relate it to your circumstances so that you can be holy just as he is holy in all your behavior lift your hand and say a big amen to that and that is why we need to listen to the word of god whatever you read god will bring it to your understanding if you are with me say a big amen to that when we were growing up they used to pray for uh, you know us before we went to write exams and i think my mother used to pray whatever he has studied bring it to his remembrance that's the that's where the problem is i am praying for revelation she is praying for reminding there is a difference in what i'm saying are you with me padichadalla nyamothukku padichadana nyamothukku varum you know but here to an extent it applies to our understanding of scripture also that is why you need to listen to god's word when you are seated in church because you are sitting here you are listening to what is being preached you go downstairs and you forget all about it that's all right but as long as you have listened to the word 10 years down the line you might be in a peculiar problem and god will remind you of what you heard on the 28th of february you will hear my voice are you with me if it is a good thing you will appreciate me if it is a warning you will get angry with me that's another problem are you with me but the truth is understanding makes you stand in your circum maybe you are going through much pressure in your relationship and god will bring about or remind that word and he will bring it to your understanding and the moment you get your understanding for example you are very ang- you are getting angry in a particular circumstance and the holy spirit will remind you of this particular verse the anger of man does not bring about the righteousness of god say that word with me the anger of man will not bring the righteousness of god what does it simply mean god is saying you getting angry is not going to solve the problem you throwing the plate is not going to solve the problem you slamming the door is not going to solve the problem you running away from your circumstance is not going to bring about the righteousness of god if the righteousness of of god has to come into your life you have to be right with god and his righteousness will flow in you and through you and make all things right if you are with me say a big amen to that that is why it is very important faith comes by hearing and understanding god's word and god's word will make you make you help you to stand the bible says he uses his word to sanctify to what extent what is the purpose of it romans chapter 8 uh, we know 28 but it is connected to verse 29 the bible says let me read it for you romans chapter 8 and verse 29 for whom he foreknew he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren the whole point of god causing all things to work together for good what is that good with an inverted commas what is that good in my present problem verse 29 says whom he foreknew he has ordained them called them sanctified them made them righteous glorified them so that they can be conformed to the image of his son the lord jesus christ remember the old advertisement i was saying when they took up that particular piece and looked their face or uh, uh, that particular object it was they were able to see a clear reflection of it and when go people see your life when god sees your life he should see the reflection of the image of the son of god until then god will constantly continually he will refine you again and again and again and again how many of you are fine that makes the all of us and god will certainly refine us again until we see christ or christ can be seen in and through our lives going back to joseph practically he did one important thing and that is what i want to leave with you uh, even at this very moment genesis chapter 14 and 
verse 15. We are going to start from 15 and then move to verse 16. Genesis chapter 41. What does the Bible say? You know, here is the man of man, the most powerful man in the then world, the Pharaoh of Egypt. He is speaking to Joseph. What does he say in verse 15? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, but no one can interpret it. And I have heard it said about you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. You know, this is these very powerful words. These are words that can kind of send the ego of a man to another planet. Is that not true? You know, here is Joseph standing in front of the powerful man in the then world. And that powerful man says, I have a dream. And he says, there is nobody in this world to interpret my dream. But I have heard that you can do it. You know, let just contact, bring that context to your particular circumstance. If you are working in an office, for example, the CEO or the chief guy calls you up in the front and he says, there are 1,600 people working in our institution, but I have heard what anybody else can't do, you can do. Immediately you will sneeze because chill in You understand what I'm saying? You know, the moment you hear those words, you know, if somebody comes and says, I've heard about you, I hear you can preach, well, you understand what I'm trying to say? So these are things that will really drive a man's pride, you know, put it in the next gear, so to speak. You know, again, there is another verse of scripture in Proverbs where it says, furnace for silver and fire for gold, but it is the, it is the, the, what do you call that? Um, the, not the encouragement, but more the kind of um, things like this, the pugalchi, what, what do you call that? A praise from people, that becomes a snare to certain people. But here you see Joseph is standing in the front of the then powerful man. He's just been released from prison for this very purpose. And Pharaoh says, I hear you can do it. He did one important thing. That's what you and I have to do in order to maintain a godly perspective. The moment he said, I hear you can do it. The very next verse from, words from Joseph was, not I, but God. Say that word together with me. Not I, but God. That makes that person maintain his godly perspective. Let me put it in another way. I hear you have a problem. Yeah, I, how are you going to deal with your problem? The, that is the moment you have to say, I am not going to deal with that problem. It is God who is going to deal with that problem in me and through me. If you have a problem this morning, it's no longer your problem. It is God's problem. The moment you begin to look at it from that particular perspective, that is when you're going to experience peace that surpasses all understanding in your heart. The principle is this, shifting of our focus. Say that word with me, it is what? Shifting. Because focus and faith, they go together in a sense. The focus and faith, they go together. Faith involves understanding and how does the shifting of our focus work together so that we can overcome our problems. Psalm 121 Verse 1 and 2. What does the Bible say? I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth, my Lord. Are you with me? What does the psalmist say? I will lift up my eyes. You know, what does it mean? Is he standing on the roof of his house and lifting his eyes towards the mountains? No, no, no. What is he trying to say? What is the message that is being conveyed? He says, I see mountain like problems but I lift up my eyes to him who has created mountains who has created the heavens who has created the earth because my help comes from God say that word with me my help comes from God so where do you need to look if your help is going to come from God you need to look to God now many times we when we face problems we look at ourselves we look at our inability we look at what we lack we look at other people and we think, you know, if only they could help us, you know, and all those things. But the Bible says if you want to maintain godly perspective, you need to do a shift in your focus from looking at your problems. You need to look to God and say, from him comes my health. Therefore, I'm going to lift up my eyes to him. From him, I shall receive my help. Psalm 123 verse 1, again the Bible declares, I will lift up my eyes to you who sits enthroned in heaven, 
because it is from you that I receive my help. Again, we need to do this willingly in our hearts, having understood that is how it really works. We want to look at God. Let me approach it from a very simple point of view. When you are seated in your car, put the first gear, where should you look? Come on. You need to go home after the service is finished. When you sit in your car, put your front first gear, where do you look? You look in the front because you want to move forward. That is the first gear. When it is in the reverse gear, where do you look? You look back. We understand all those things. Same thing in a, in a much more higher, deeper level. The Bible says we need to look to God. Many times when we are in a need, we look to people and they might have it, but they won't give it. You understand what I'm saying? They have it, but they don't give it. They are aware of your need, but in spite of that, they are not opening their hands to meet your need. And what, uh, what happens when you look at those people, you begin to get you know, symptoms of ulcer. You understand what I'm saying? You begin to get angry, you begin to get bitter, and you're saying they are having it, but they are not giving to me. What does God say? They are having it and not giving it to you, and you're focusing on them. I am having it and I want to give it to you. Hallelujah. So quit looking at people who have it and don't give. Look, at, look to him who has it, who wants to give it. And the psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to him. From him I shall receive my help. Lift your hand and say a big amen to that. Many times that is what is happening. We look to people who really can't help us. We look to people who really can't give us anything. But the Bible says if you want to maintain a godly perspective, like Joseph, you know, this is a very tremendous responsibility. I hear, you can interpret it. Immediately he says, not I, but God. I do not know everything, but he knows everything. I do not have everything. He has got everything. And with, with him, with his strength, I can do what he wants me to do in my life. Lift your hand and say a big amen to that. If you have been looking around, if you are looking at the wrong people, for them to come and meet your need, I want you to shift your focus and fix it on him because it is from him we shall receive a blessing. Lift your hand and say a big amen to that. Two examples with which I am going to close. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 21, you know, the Bible declares that people were being bitten by snakes and Moses calls on God, Lord, what should I do to elevate this problem, to deal with this problem? God immediately says, make a brazen serpent, meaning a serpent made of bronze, Put it on a pole, lift it up and anyone who gets bit by the snake, when they look at the lifted snake, they will get healed. The, the Bible verse says, everyone who got bit, when they looked to the brazen serpent, they were healed. And the Bible kind of amplifies what it means to look, to look at it expectantly with a gaze of understanding and receiving it from him. All of Old Testament is a shadow pointing to what is going to happen in the New Testament. And in the New Testament, Jesus picks on this simple example that happened in the, in the wilderness. And he talks about in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 14 onwards. We are going to look at three verses of scripture and we are going to pray this very morning. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 14, the Bible says, Jesus is speaking. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of God, Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes may in him have eternal life. I told you, faith and focus is not just, you know, just lifting your gaze. It is having an understanding. It is having understood the word of God. The Bible says, as Moses lifted up the servant, even the son of man has to be lifted up on the cross of Calvary. Two things signifying what Christ has accomplished. In the Old Testament, when they lifted up the serpent, the bronze serpent, it simply signifies the defeat of the enemy. Say that word with me. It signifies what? The defeat of the enemy. You know, simple logic, but I want you to get it. There is a live snake that is wriggling and biting a person's ankle. What does God say through Moses? When a live snake bites your ankle, I want you to look at the dead snake that Moses is holding up. What is this logic? How is, how is that possible? Something happening in my life and God says, I want you to look at the serpent 
which cannot do anything to you remember the live snake can can kind of bite you but the dead snake it cannot bite you and god says when a live snake bites you i want you to look at what oh come on i want you to look at what so when you look at the dead snake you will be healed how is that possible we to put it in another sense when the devil is creating problems for you remember and look at this particular aspect and know that he has already been defeated the moment you know and understand that he has been defeated what is happening in your life will no longer be a problem for you the bible says submit to god and resist the devil and he will flee from you say that word together with me submit to god resist the devil and he will i like the tamil version avan ungale vittu odi povan tell your neighbor avan ungale vittu oh come on say it again he will run away from you when will he run away from you for some people he has taken the spare room in the house you understand what i'm saying because they don't understand they don't submit but when moses lifted up the dead or the brazen serpent it simply says this serpent can't do any harm for you in other words as this can do no harm for you the devil has got no authority over you the moment you understand that's the moment he's going to flee from your life lift your hand and say a big amen to that jesus says as the brazen serpent was lifted by moses the son of man has to be lifted up on the cross of calvary what does that signify not only does it signify the defeat of the enemy it also signifies the victory of the lord jesus christ if you are going through defeat this very morning god says lift your eyes and fix on him who has already won the victory for you the moment you fix your eyes upon him what he has accomplished becomes part and parcel of your life that what faith does in your life lift your hand and say big amen where are you looking this morning that is very important are you looking at what is happening in your life you know let me put it from from this particular point of view instead of looking at what is happening i want you to focus on what has happened what has happened 2000 years ago on the cross of calvary the bible says he became a curse so that i don't have to be cursed now he became sin so that i can become the righteousness of god now he bore my sin and my sorrow and my pain so that i can be healed now instead of focusing on what is happening now i want you to focus on what has already happened on the cross of calvary that is why paul says the life i live in this body is through faith in the son of god who has loved me and has done everything for me say that word together with me who has loved me and has done everything for me saying those words jesus continues to say for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that none should perish but all should have eternal life say that word with me none should perish but all should have say that word together with me none should perish i will not perish but i will have eternal life because the life i live in this body is through faith in the son of god who has loved me and has done everything that i will ever need in my life it's already been done on the cross of calvary lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah this morning let me declare it is well with your soul hallelujah shifting your focus is key not i but god as long as you say it's me my problem it will be a problem the moment you shift your focus shift your faith from your problem from what is happening to what has happened that is the moment the bible says they looked unto him and their faces were radiant another translation puts it like this they looked unto him and their faces were never confused hallelujah confusion is gone clarity has come it's all because of jesus christ he is going to bless you and me this morning hallelujah stand to your feet as we look to god in prayer this morning as every eye closed as we look to god in prayer god is going to do a mighty wonderful thing in your life that will bring about a mighty change in your circumstances hallelujah as joseph said lord it's no longer i but you paul says no longer i who is living but christ lives in me the life i live in this body is through faith in the son of god who has loved me and he has given himself for me on the cross of calvary he became a curse 
he became sin he became poor he became sick he became everything that we will ever have to bear in life and he has carried them all away so that we can enjoy the blessing the righteousness and all the peace that only he can bring into our lives hallelujah i want you to close your eyes lift your hand fix your mind upon jesus hallelujah there is a song which goes like this turn your eyes on jesus fix or oh, look at his wonderful face and all the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light and glory of his grace i want you to look at to the cross this morning because where you have to die he has already died where i have to be crucified he was already crucified because of what he has done i can stand the perfect in the righteousness that comes from him hallelujah lift your hand as we worship god this morning mm-hmm. my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and i bear it no more praise the lord praise the lord oh my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glory is gone I said not in part but the whole It's nailed to the cross and I bear it no more Praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul It is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul lord we thank you this morning as we fix on what has already happened on the cross of calvary lord everything that needs to be done has already been done on the cross of calvary therefore we are not going to worry about what is happening because everything that needs to happen has already happened in our favor on the cross of calvary it's no longer us but it is you living in us through your holy spirit i declare the blessing of god to be upon your people in jesus most precious name we pray Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God be with you. God bless you.